What's up guys, my name is PT from Charlie Intel. So you may or may not have heard, and to be honest, you shouldn't really be shocked or surprised by this announcement or news anyway, uh, because we should have guessed this uh, a long way off. But essentially, uh, the launch weekend for Infinite Warfare in terms of sales hasn't matched or exceeded the launch weekend for Black Ops 3 in 2015. So according to several sources, sales are down by as much as 50% in some countries for Infinite Warfare on its launch weekend versus Black Ops 3 in 2015, despite both games being released on pretty much the same day or the same week in November on both years in 2015 and in 2016 for Infinite Warfare. So we could run through a long list of reasons as to why Infinite Warfare hasn't been as successful this year in terms of its launch weekend versus Black Ops 3. Uh, for example, perhaps confidence with Infinity Ward as a studio isn't very high after the release of Ghosts in 2013. So I think we can all agree the uh, reputation of Infinity Ward is slightly tarnished after the release of Call of Duty Ghosts in 2013. It wasn't the best uh, received game in the community and uh, since then, I don't think many people have had anything nice to say about Infinity Ward overall. So uh, it hasn't really helped their cause in terms of their latest game. Now, it could also be down to the fact that not many people want to play another feature-based Call of Duty this year. Or perhaps people just hated the boost jumping abilities we've seen in the last two games in Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare. And they just want a grounded Call of Duty, which Infinite Warfare couldn't offer. Perhaps uh, Battlefield 1 was a more attractive game to buy and people didn't want to spend more money on Infinite Warfare. So they made a choice between either Battlefield 1 or Infinite Warfare. I mean, we could go through a ton of reasons as to why. But ultimately, this isn't really good news for the Call of Duty franchise and definitely not good news for Activision either. I mean, if you're a business owner, whether it's a small business or a large business, the last thing you want to do is see a downturn in sales overall. I mean, you always aim to have an uh, increase in sales year on year. And obviously, Infinite Warfare is not delivering that, despite the fact, of course, they had Modern Warfare Masters alongside the release of Infinite Warfare. Uh, so by paying a little bit more money, you actually got two games uh, this year as opposed to one game, which is quite a surprise for the Call of Duty franchise to get two games which are quite substantial in terms of their story modes uh, and their multiplayer modes as well. It was quite a good thing for the consumer, but of course, it, you were actually forced into buying Infinite Warfare first in order to actually then have the opportunity to pay slightly extra to play Modern Warfare Masters. So it was somewhat anti-consumer in terms of getting more sales uh, overall for the franchise because you know both games catered for two different audiences and I think we can all agree that some people just don't want to play a future-based Call of Duty anymore. So if I were Activision, I probably would have released both games as standalone games. So kept the current deal they have right now where you pay what, it's like 80 bucks or something for a copy of Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remastered, but also release Modern Warfare Remastered separately. So for those of us who don't want Infinite Warfare, we can just buy Modern Warfare Remastered on its own. But it works out cheaper if you buy the bundle for $80 to have both games, but otherwise if you buy both games separately, it costs a little bit more. So you're still incentivized to buy the actual bundle package but at the same time we have the choice to buy either Infinite Warfare or Modern Warfare Master separately then that just allows you to play whichever game you feel is best for you and you don't get forced into buying both games uh, which just isn't very good so if they did that I think it actually would have worked out a lot better and uh, fingers crossed they might actually release it as a standalone game soon but they could have also just you know delayed Modern Warfare Master until like six months into the cycle of Infinite Warfare so you release Infinite Warfare in 2016 and then wait six months and then release Modern Warfare Master in 2017 to tie us over until the Sledgehammer Games uh, game in 2017 uh, in the month of November that could have worked and also would have actually uh, you know generate more sales for the franchise also so let's move on to 2017 so we are officially in the run-up to the next Call of Duty game in 2017 I know it doesn't feel like it uh, given the fact of course we've just had a game come out or two games come out in the franchise but if you think about it it's literally around 12 ish or perhaps even less than 12 months until the release of the game by Sledgehammer Games in November 2017. Now, we have no idea what this game is about, uh, where it's based, the time kind of frame it's based in, the era, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have no information to go on because of course it's too early, but obviously soon enough, we'll start to hear more and more information. We're probably about three or four months away from starting to see some teasers and just little bits of information as to what this game might be about. Now, why 2017 is so important is because it's going to be a very big turning point, potentially at least, uh, for the franchise and the direction of the Call of Duty games in general. So, as you all know, the Call of Duty franchise has really been pushing itself into the future in terms of the overall setting and era of each game since Black Ops 2. So, Black Ops 2 came along that was based in or around 2025, and uh, since then we've been going further and further into the future until we've reached Infinite Warfare, which has really pushed things even further into the future uh, to the point we're now based in space with spaceships 
uh, and it's just taking things to a whole new level in terms of how far we go into the future with the Call of Duty franchise. Now, as you can imagine, many people are getting slightly tired of the fact that every single game recently has been based in the future, especially since the franchise used to be more of a conventional war shooter, where each game was based either in World War II or pre-modern times, or modern day times such as the Modern Warfare series, where things were more relatable in terms of the weapons, the maps, and it just, you know, played better for some reason, I think. I mean, some of the future games have been good, for example, Black Ops 2, in my opinion, was probably the best pulled off uh, future-based Call of Duty versus the rest, such as Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty Ghosts, uh, Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3, and so on. I felt Black Ops 2 had the right balance between being a grounded Call of Duty experience like previous titles and also having an injection of a future setting. It just played it well and it just did it right. Whereas the future games we've had alongside Black Ops 2 have somewhat complicated what was once a simple formula to make a good Call of Duty game that is enjoyable to play for many hours on end. So in my opinion, Sledgehammer Games really needs to deliver something very different next year in terms of the setting, the design and the mechanics of their game. I think they need to go back to being boots on the ground and uh, just simplify the overall formula of what Call of Duty really is. So, as you know, back in the day when we had enjoyable games such as uh, Modern Warfare 1, 2 and 3 and Black Ops and so on, most of those games were quite simple in the way they actually executed the overall game itself. So we had simple maps with three lanes that actually worked quite well. We had, you know, weapons that were actually balanced, that weren't laser weapons. We had perks and kill streaks, all that kind of stuff that actually worked and were effective and balanced overall. Since then we've had all this laser stuff with anti-gravity grenades or whatever you've seen in like the Infinite Warfare. Uh, it's just gone crazy, I think. I think it's gone too far. And I need to just rewind a little, just calm things down and just get things back to being a, a more simplified Call of Duty experience like we've seen in past Call of Duties before it went into the future. If they want to go back into the future in 2018 with Treyarch's game, that's great. But I think just one year, give us a break, make it boots on the ground, and I think then they'll win back some fans who have been turned off by Infinite Warfare, and that is the reason why the sales have gone down this year in terms of uh, versus Black Ops 3 and the game before that as well. So literally, it's quite a simple task. They just need to bring things back to normal uh, on the ground and in a current day or pre-modern day setting, and then I think they'll win over some fans until the next game. That's just my opinion, fingers crossed they'll do that, and uh, hopefully we'll see some evidence of that in the teasers and trailers in the next few months from Sledgehammer Games. Now, one thing that won't happen next year is a Call of Duty remaster released alongside the new Call of Duty title in 2017. So, as you know, this year we had Modern Warfare remastered, but Raven Software had to work on that for two years to actually put that together to then release alongside Infinite Warfare, because I guess uh, Activision knew Infinite Warfare wasn't going to go down so well, so they had to spend a lot of money and get Raven to stop whatever they're doing to then make a remastered version of Call of Duty 4 from 2007 with Modern Warfare Remastered. So as you can imagine, there's no one available to actually make another remaster for the next two or three years, I guess you could say, uh, to then release another remaster such as Modern Warfare 2. So until then, there's nothing to release alongside Call of Duty in 2017. So, so whatever they're working on at Sledgehammer Games right now needs to be a success in order to attract the fan base back to the actual franchise itself because of course Infinite Warfare has kind of driven away some fans uh, because it's just so far into the future. So whatever Sledgehammer Games do, they have to make it work because they've only got themselves to work with as opposed to a remaster. I know people have made several videos all over the internet about how we could be seeing Modern Warfare 2 Remastered release next year alongside the game in 2017. Now, that does sound great and it makes sense given the fact, of course, we now have Modern Warfare Remastered this year, so it makes sense to then follow on with Modern Warfare 2 Remastered uh, the following year. But sadly, uh, given the fact it took Raven so long to make the remastered version of Call of Duty 4 from 2007, uh, there's no one really available to actually put a remastered version of Modern Warfare 2 together right now. Uh, so I don't think that will happen. I think Sledgehammer Games are going to be on their own. I don't think Treyarch need a game to release alongside their game in 2018. So perhaps in 2019 when Infinity Ward come by again with their next game, uh, which hopefully might not be Infinite Warfare 2, we will see a Modern Warfare 2 remaster to release alongside their game also. So that's just my thoughts and opinions, but I can pretty much guarantee, I'm willing to put money down on this, that we're not going to see a remastered version of any game released alongside the game in 2017 next year. So uh, as much as that sounds great, it's just not gonna happen in my opinion. So let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below and what your thoughts are of what they need to do next year in terms of the next game in 2017. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed the video and a subscribe for further Charlie Ian's whole content every one to two days. Thanks for watching guys and see 
see in the next video. Make sure you watch tomorrow's video uh, because it's going to be very interesting. I have a special guest and you do not want to miss it. So thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video. Goodbye.